Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot and in today's video let's talk about the fly-by-wire laws of the Boeing 787 and the Boeing 777. So this is going to be relevant not only for those of you who wish to fly the 787 but also for those who are looking forward to the PNDG 777. First thing said though, I am very sure that the 787 and the 777 are going to feel different in the simulator for the simple fact that they are developed by different developers and you can have the exact same aircraft modeled twice by different developers and it is going to feel different. So that much said beforehand and I do not even want to judge on which developer is going to be bad and which of them is going to be good. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the 777's fly-by-wire system then, and obviously the 787's fly-by-wire system. They follow the so-called C-star-U law, and that law basically in layman's term means that the airplane can be trimmed like any other, and you basically command a certain trim speed from your fly-by-wire. Now, what this means is pretty much that you will always trim the airplane out for a certain speed. And as long as you are on that speed, your airplane is going to be in trim. Now, what exactly does that mean for your flying in the aircraft? Well, basically, it is going to behave very similar to any other aircraft. However, there are going to be some slight differences in what you can expect. And the differences mainly are that as long as you are on speed, you will not need to retrim your airplane when you are changing configuration. So if your airplane is trimmed for, let's say, 250 knots, and then you start extending the flaps or you extend the landing gear, you will not need to trim your airplane again, contrary to some conventional, well, all conventional aircraft. So. In other words, your airplane is basically going to be in trim for as long as you're on speed. Now, for your practical flying, you will feel that you will not need to retrim the airplane as you're changing your configuration. All right then, let's see how that is going to look like in a practical example. We're currently standing here at Tokyo Haneda Airport and we are ready for departure from Monray 16 right for our flight all Nippon 841 towards Singapore. Let's take down the heads-up display. You just saw me complete the checklist before, so we are all set to go right here. Okay, so park and break is off, and with that, let's take off, and I'm going to explain it to you while we fly along. Stabilized. Set to take off thrust. Set. Eighty knots. Rotate, and off we go. Okay, smoothly and slowly rotate the airplane up. Be sure to keep it below the tail strike angle over here. And off we go. Gear up, pause at rate, and now we're flying. So you will find that initially the airplane is going to be in trim, as you can see. Our trim state, or rather our pitch, is not changing. Now if we do our left hand turn, you will find that as we are slowly losing our airspeed over here, your nose will tend to come down. And this is because your airplane is trimmed for the 185 knots that we initially had. Now, as we are about to start accelerating, you will notice that you have to apply a little bit of trim. Basically, one second of trimming equals 10 knots of change there. So, the way this works internally is that your aircraft is basically commanding a set trim speed. Now, 
I don't know yet if this is going to be in the PMDG 777 in Microsoft Flight Simulator, but in P3D you had the version that you could visualize your trim speed by showing the um, target trim speed as a speed bug on the speed tape. And that was very helpful to understand how the airplane works. However, as you can see, I trimmed it along and basically we're at 260 knots right now and our nose is going to stay right where it is. Now, if you are looking for just a tiny change of trim, or rather a tiny change of speed, then what's going to happen is, as long as your speed target, or rather your trim speed target, is very close to your actual airspeed, a tiny flick on the switch, so a tiny flick on the trim switch like this, is automatically going to make your trim speed jump right to your present airspeed. So like that, you can easily trim your airplane out. Now, for our case, this is an incorrectly drawn turn over here, so I'm just about going to correct for that manually. In any case, the way this works is quite simple. Let's say you're currently doing 264 knots as we are right now. Once we are going to pass 10,000 feet, we want to accelerate to our end route climb speed, which is going to be roughly in the region of about 320 knots. As we need to cover a difference of approximately 60 knots, it means we will need 6 seconds of continuous trimming in order to align our airplane with our target trim speed. So, let me demonstrate this to you. I'm quickly going to fix the routing over here by going direct to the next waypoint, like this. And now that we're going direct, and now that we're on speed, we want to accelerate to our target speed here of 331 knots. So now I'm taking my nose down, we note that we've been in trim for 260, and we wish to accelerate by approximately... that is a 70 knots of speed. So as the nose is coming down, I'm basically waiting for every 10 knots of speed increase, and then I'm adding a tiny bit, about a second of nose down trim. And this basically keeps my aircraft in trim following Boeing's C-Star U law in the fly-by-wire computer. Now it does seem to me like in the 787 they have simplified this a little bit. So basically in here when I am um, clicking my trim switch for about half a second, it seems like the trim is kind of jumping to the speed that I'm currently following. Now this is not how the real airplane would behave for as long as your trim speed is more than a couple of knots of your current airspeed. However, I do find it to be quite a neat little tool there in order to make your flying a little bit easier in those aircraft. I'm sure that by the time the PMDG 777 comes out, you will be acquainted to flying the 787, so you might need a little bit of a retraining there once the PMDG is out in order to, well, be able to control your airplane properly like the real Boeing 777 because of this little difference in how Working Title has um, simplified the trimming process in this aircraft. Alright, I hope you found this one interesting. I'm sure you did. And if you did, then do let me know what you think of it in the comments below the video. I'm looking forward to hear from you and your experience. And I'm really looking forward to see you all again on the next one. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I hope to see you all again very soon. If you want to support the channel, you can do that using the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below or by becoming a channel member, which is going to give you exclusive early access to new videos before they are released for everyone else. Thank you for watching. See you all again very soon.